What goes around, comes around. Welcome to Watch Mojo UK, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 times Katie Hopkins got humiliated. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we'll be looking at the public misadventures of businesswoman, TV personality, and all-around media troll, Katie Hopkins. Focusing on moments that saw her embarrassed and or ashamed. Buckle up, people. Number 10, when you're gonna lose it. So I put on four stone to prove that, you know, you're not lucky to be skinny. <laughs> when you're gonna lose it? When Hopkins comes out with controversial comments on chat shows, the hosts usually wince in outrage, unable to properly fight back with anything too risque. Celebrity juice, however, isn't like that. When arrogant or heavily opinionated guests feature on the show, the gloves are off. Going up against comedian Chris Ramsey and ballroom dancer James Jordan on the opposing team, Hopkins is slammed three times in under two minutes. Maybe you need to shove less in this end so that you don't get fat. Do you not, do you not lose loads and loads of weight because most of your <laughs> comes out the front? <laughs> Taking digs at his stance on obesity, the jokes come thick and fast. And Hopkins, well, she has no comeback whatsoever. Ooh, wouldn't it be brilliant if that fat cow couldn't lose it? What, 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 to, what, what, the, to be fair, they probably wouldn't, because unlike you, they probably wouldn't judge you for being overweight. <laughs> Number nine, who would work for you? In this appearance on the debate show Nolan Live, Hopkins is critiquing tattoos and how they harm people's chances of getting employment. Do you know what my passion is? My passion is... Eating. <laughs> Explaining how she would not employ someone with tattoos and then somewhat randomly insulting the host's weight, it's safe to say that Hopkins puts herself in the crosshairs. And all it takes is this question from an audience member to put her in her place. You keep saying about who you wouldn't apply. Really, who would work for you? <laughs> Even after a long pause filled with laughter and cheering, Hopkins still can't think of a decent comeback. Her retort is rather generic, which in turn makes her look a little silly. It's, it's a really fair question, and uh, to be fair, if you work for me, it tends to be people that don't take sick days, always show up for work, work really hard. Number 8. Fired publicly Back in 2016, Hopkins started hosting a highly controversial Sunday phone-in show for the radio station LBC, where she tackled everything from politics to religion. After just over a year of hosting the segment, she was fired for a tweet she sent relating to the Manchester bombings, in which she suggested that there needs to be a final solution with regards to tackling terrorism. I used the word final solution in a tweet and I would not in any way want to use that term and the inference other people lay on that. But it was the way in which she was fired that makes this entry worthy of being on this list. According to employees of the radio station, the announcement that she would be leaving the show was met with massive cheers and applause, and news of the rejoicement was all over the media. I am sorry, we were wrong. Number 7. Cancelled You'd think a TV show dedicated to the opinionated rantings of Katie Hopkins would be a rip-roaring success, right? Well, maybe not. And in fact, it turns out that one series of said show, titled If Katie Hopkins Ruled the World, was enough for everyone. I would never, I would never lower myself to propose to a man. If he's not going to ask me, frankly, he can chuff off. The show ran for seven episodes and saw Katie take aim at wedding proposals, overweight flyers, and euthanasia, before it was cancelled due to low ratings. It's all about personal choice. I don't want to be a burden on my kids. That's the biggest fear of any mum, right? Watching Hopkins rant as a guest on a show is one thing, but giving her a platform to do it on her own terms seemed a step too far for the viewing public. My rule, which I think is very wise, is if you're too thick, you can't tick. Number six, repulsed Schofield. Hopkins' typical response to being challenged in an argument is usually to haul insults at whoever is opposing her. But in this appearance on This Morning, when discussing the importance of parents being with their children on their birthdays, Hopkins takes a slightly different approach with host Philip Schofield. Do and not Max. bring India up again, Philip, Poppy or I will sit on your lap. And pop it off. <laughs> Katie is passive-aggressive and borderline flirtatious to Philip when he talks about one of her children, and his response is 
priceless. It's possibly the worst thing I've ever heard <laughs> of all the things you've said. Not only does Schofield's shocked silence speak volumes as we see him physically shudder, but his response clearly hits a nerve with Hopkins, who merely glares with disdain. Number 5. Losing the Libel Case a lot of people use Twitter to voice their unpopular opinions, and Hopkins is one of them. But the thing that people like that I do is that I iterate the stuff that you can't say anymore because no one's allowed to say it. But in this rather unusual case of mistaken identity, Hopkins not only found herself humiliated, but she also got taken to court and lost big time. Mistakenly aiming slander at food writer and journalist Jack Monroe, believing her to be responsible for something anti-austerity commentator Laurie Penny said, a Twitter onslaught ensued. Monroe later claimed that the comments made by Hopkins tarnished her reputation and even led to death threats. My reputation would have been wounded, so I, I had no choice but to respond to her. She took Hopkins to court and eventually Monroe won and was awarded £20,000 in damages. Moral of the story, think before you speak. Number 4. Why are you clapping? While debating one of her favourite topics, obesity, on the Irish chat show The Late Late Show, Hopkins aimed several defamatory comments at obese people, claiming that they should be ashamed of themselves and must be living miserable lives. Hi, Ryan. Hi, uh, how are you? You're not hard to spot. <laughs> Thanks, Katie. When a female audience member tried to speak up on the matter, Katie had a quick dig at her weight. I don't know why everyone's clapping. No, but I take, I take issue with everybody clapping. What? She then tries to comment on the fact that the other audience members are supporting her by applauding, and she does this several times. Fat and being fat on the clapping is... I do not know what you are clapping. But what starts as a throwaway comment just becomes embarrassing as the audience drowns out her complaints, just leaving her looking maliciously. Take note, it seems supportive applauding is her kryptonite. I'm not proud of being fat, I'm not ashamed of it, but if I was creating and generating the kind of unhappiness that you do with those kind of words, that would be something to be ashamed of, not being fat. <laughs> Number 3. The Tattoo Debate Yep, we're back on tattoos. But this time, it's the viewers at home that take aim at Hopkins in the form of a poll. When you see tattoos, you think of someone that is just looking for attention, who hasn't managed to find a way in their life through conventional means. In a discussion about celebrities who have tattoos and whether or not they are good role models, Hopkins speaks aggressively on the topic and even insults a fellow guest sitting next to her. As an experiment, a poll is held to see what percentage of viewers actually agree with Hopkins' opinion, and the results are a landslide, and not in her favour. Are celebrities with tattoos a bad role model? Yes, agree with Katie 80% and no, 82% agree with Katie Wasel. Not only is it great seeing guest Katie Wasel lock horns with Hopkins, but the fact that the one-sided poll comes in towards the end to back her up is brilliant. Does. What someone does with their body surely is their, entirely their own affair unless it impinges upon your life. Number 2. Geographical Names Look up the word hypocrite in the dictionary and there's probably something about Katie Hopkins on there. Why? Well, take a look at this interview. A name for me is a shortcut. It's and a really does, efficient does... way of working out what class that child comes from. Do I want my children to play with them? She expresses a particular dislike for names like Apple, as well as geographical names like Brooklyn. Presenter Philip Schofield then goes on to remind Hopkins that she has daughters named Poppy and India. And, well, uh, it's all a little ridiculous, you might say. Geographic. Oh, so Brooklyn or London. Your or... child's called India. Yes, but you know... It's... <laughs> Perhaps the most shocking part is the fact that Hopkins doesn't seem to understand that she is being hypocritical. I mean, duh! You judge children. Yes. On their names. Yes, Holly. Number one, the fake award. If only there was an award for people like Katia. Huh? Well, thanks to YouTube star Josh Peters, there is. In arguably one of the most elaborate pranks the internet has ever seen, Peters had Hopkins travel all the way to Prague to accept a fake award, which was called the Campaign to Unify the Nation Trophy. Take the initials of that word and, uh, you get the idea. Which brings me to Katie Hopkins, the recipient of the inaugural Campaign to Unify the Nation Trophy. 
I cannot think of a more worthy recipient. Playing the whole thing devilishly convincingly, the guys have Katie arrive and accept the award, and she's proud as punch. And if anyone was wondering whether this was a step too far, watch your acceptance speech and get back to us. Thank you very much for being here. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Watch Mojo UK and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.